Imagine it's the end of the day. You've had a very intense, long day, an exam in the morning, which you've probably spent two or three days cramming for last minute. Maybe you even played a sport. You stayed back after school. Every single muscle in your body is aching. Your mind has been running relentlessly and all it wants to do right now is rest and relax. So you're excited about going home, right? If you're imagining being in this position. All you want to do is go home, drop your bag, and just lay down in your room. So as you open the door, you're met with this. A decrepit, run-down, crumbling structure. As you walk through the halls, what was once a living room greets you. Your kitchen is falling apart. There's barely any furniture. It looks like these rooms have never even met a mop or even a ghormuchartana. There's so much dust. And then when you enter the one space which is supposed to help you relax and really, really rest, is cold, moldy, damp, and completely unwelcoming. So if you followed me so far and are able to imagine yourself as this person, what would you feel if you came home to this? I'm gonna throw out some words and if it makes sense for you, just say yes. If this were me, walking through this space, I would feel anxiety. I'm seeing a lot of head nods. Confusion. <laughs> what happened to my house? <laughs> um, definitely, I would experience some fear. I'd be a little scared. Um, a part of me would want to flee, completely run away. All right, now I'm going to flip this a little bit. Imagine the same day has occurred for you. Tired, you're spent, and all you want to do is relax. But this time, you're met with images like this. A brightly lit, comfortable, airy space. As you're walking through it, you can easily let down all the burdens and worries you've had during your day, and they're safe in this space. There's no other word to describe this but aram. It's so aram. It's not OCD bhabe organized. It's, you know, things are in its place, and it just looks very inviting. So I'm going to use the same, um, uh, I'm going to ask you the same question, and if you can relate, just say a yes. The words that I would be experiencing if I walked through this space would be feeling welcome, relaxed, even a little bit excited. <laughs> yeah, and of course, aram, the safety. Right? My favorite word. So I have a secret for you guys. Both of these spaces I just showed you are the exact same structure. They are the exact same home and belong to the exact same person. Seeing some confused faces. <laughs> so. Let me just tell you straight off the bat, these are not real physical structures. This is a metaphor. This 
actually belongs to me, both of these spaces. It reflects and represents my relationship to myself, to my life, and to my body. I'm sure many of you can relate. There are days where we feel we belong exactly where we are, and then there are days where we wish we were anywhere else but right here. Is that something that resonates for some of you? Again, lots of yeses. This is just a human experience. <laughs> we have good days, we have bad days. But I want to tell you a little bit about this. If I were to split my life <laughs> into two parts from this point going backwards um, and look back on my adolescence, my teenage years, I was a high schooler in Scholastica. Are there any Scholasticans here? Yay, one or two. <laughs> so I was a high schooler in Scholastica and from the outside, my life looked like I had everything together. You know, I was into sports, I was pretty popular, I was a pretty girl, um, I had a really hot boyfriend. <laughs> so, so, you know, life was incredible. But the truth of the matter is, even though everything from the outside looked amazing, I even had good grades. Internally, inside, the space and the mindset I was inhabiting kind of was like this. And I'm going to say, tell you a little bit of why. I'm not going to share all of why. But part of it was not having a strong sense of self, which can be normal in adolescence. You're figuring out who you are, right? But also, I was one of those, and still am, I say I'm a recovering perfectionist, relentlessly pursuing perfection, thinking that I always had to have everything be perfect, perfect grades, perfect life. The second I accomplished something, that wasn't good enough. I had to move on to the next part of my life, accomplishing more. As many of you know, when you live like that, you're never enough. All the accomplishments in the world are never enough. So this was what my life internally looked like when outside it was shiny and beautiful and perfect. The second home. I think I started doing a lot of work to step into this world, this life, this body, around my early 20s, my mid-20s. And I'll tell you what my life looked like from the outside. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. It was a mess. Mid-20s, late-20s were some of the most challenging years of my life. My father passed away when I was 25 years old, and he is my most favorite human being in the universe. So as you can imagine, that's a heavy one, right? And he was ill for over a decade. So it wasn't just the loss, it was also dealing with and processing his health. Also, I had, in not being able to deal with a lot of this, I had put on about 50 pounds. That may not sound that important, but in our world, that is very important, especially when I was used to having the perfect life in high school. So, from the outside, my life was in shambles. But if I were to be honest with you guys, internally, it looked like this, not because of magic, because I was committed to myself and I was committed to do the work. So I'm not saying love your life only when it looks perfect. I'm saying accept and honor your life, especially when it's not ideal, especially when it's difficult, especially when everything around you is falling apart. Come into your home, this internal home, Show up with all your grief, your anxiety, your fears, your anger, and put it down safely in this home. Don't try to leave it outside the house. Once you do that, you'll be working so hard to abandon yourself, your insides will feel like a shell of a life. So, a little bit about me and what I do, I just thought I'd put in one slide. I support people to feel more comfortable and empowered in their bodies and their lives. And I also support people 
to live a life of leadership and service from a foundation of well-being. I believe responsible, conscious, and aware leadership is what the world is asking for right now. And in order to live and embody that kind of leadership, you need to be aware. You need to do the internal personal work. So my area is leadership, but I focus on the person. I focus on you getting all your emotional processing right and making sure you don't project out into the world. I also have a platform called Thrive Women where I support women to level up. And what that means is I support women with emotional resilience, leadership skills, and also financial literacy skills. I teach basic, basic things like how to budget, how to manage money, how to negotiate in a room for a higher salary, how to invest, how to save. Very, very basic things, I break it down, especially for young women. Why are so many of us stuck in this place where we feel like we're not good enough? I saw a lot of nodding heads, especially at the beginning of my presentation. I'm gonna say it's because so many of us suffer from this. It's a very serious disease, guys. It's called the I'll be happy when syndrome. I'll be happy when I lose 20 pounds. I'll be happy when I find the perfect partner. I'll be happy when I have two children. I'll be happy when I finally get into the Ivy League college of my dreams. I'll be happy when I get my master's. I'll be happy when I get my PhD. I'll be happy when I make my first million dollars. I'll be happy when I make my first 10 million dollars. It's exhausting. <laughs> the thing is, if you're approaching life that way, what you're saying is, I'm not fulfilled right now. Right now, where I am is not good enough to fill up with belonging and safety and contentment. I always have to feel a lack and I always have to relentlessly pursue. Now, in our mainstream world, what I just said is called leadership. To me, that's not leadership. That is damaging to your health. That's very, very dangerous. So, what are the causes for I'll be happy when syndrome? I'm sure there's so many causes, but we'll touch on a few. Social media. <laughs> I'm sorry to be that old person. <laughs> who's preaching social media to you guys. But we have to recognize that every single post, every single picture that people upload into the interwebs are perfectly crafted, perfectly curated. And we are comparing ourselves against an impossibility. It's not fair to ourselves. Normal people even, if you look at their feed, they are living the baller life. <laughs> you know, it makes no sense. <laughs> and I cannot imagine being at high school in this day and age. The pressure must be really, really intense. So yeah, what I'm talking about today, especially, is this feeling of homelessness lack of belonging that so many of us feel. We're constantly comparing ourselves to every single person around us, every single accomplishment around us, that we feel spiritually broken and homeless in our own bodies. Our bodies become a project to solve and fix and constantly attack. You are not good enough. You don't look good enough. There's something really wrong with you. It's not your fault. You're not broken. Media and advertising spends billions of dollars to bombard you every single day with advertising to tell you you're not thin enough, you're not fair enough, you're not good looking enough, you're not buff enough, you're not smart enough, you're not talented enough. You, something's wrong with you. That's completely wrong. They're trying to tell you, you should measure your worth by all of these external things. Know her? <laughs> so the Kim Kardashians of the world, they embody this. Not to hate on her, but I'm hating on that archetype of celebrity. She looks like that, but the reality is she probably wakes up to a village of 40 people combing her hair, perfecting her makeup, 
sewing in her into her dress, making sure every single accessory she has on herself has been thought about for weeks. She's probably gotten, or she or celebrities have probably gotten a lot of procedures. And then after all of this work, when they're about to upload a picture, one picture of a day, there's airbrushing, there's photoshopping, there's editing, there's alterations, there's God knows what going into that picture to make it candid. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not saying don't take care of yourself. I'm not saying don't take pride in how you look. I love taking care of myself and dressing up. What I am saying is when you catch yourself constantly thinking about how you look and how you should look and how you're wrong and how you can be better, take a step back. Think about it critically. That damages your well-being. That damages your sense of self. So just be careful and be kinder to yourself. Rest in your body. Have some aram in your body. It's okay. Forget all this. But not all the time. What measures your worth? This is a question, <laughs> believe it or not, I get a lot from especially young people. Um, is it how much I weigh? Is it how I'm doing in school? Is it how much money I make? Is it how I look? Is it my health? Am I fit? Is it my past mistakes? Is it my relationship status? Is it, it's endless, right? Well, I have big news for you guys. None of these are how you measure your worth. Your worth is infinite. Your value is infinite, and it's infinite simply because you exist. Bus, nothing else. <laughs> so stop comparing yourself. Don't abandon yourself in search of acceptance from others. Once you feel at home in your own body, in your own life, in your own self, that's all that matters. Others will start gravitating towards you and sense that that is real confidence. Confidence is not something you put on a show for. Confidence is something you embody. So I'm going to start wrapping this up, actually, and ask you guys to look to your left and look to your right. Look at your neighbors. Take a few moments. Look into their eyes. And just as kindly as you can, say, welcome home. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>